Hello dee doo dee doo there, my name is Jampot Bong, and I love thumbnails. I'd even go as far as to say that getting to make a fun little picture to represent my video is my favourite part of the video creation process. And especially recently, for the most recent season of the SMP I'm on on Blocks, I've been really focusing on trying to improve my thumbnails by picking up a load of fun little techniques. And one very nice technique I worked out has managed to turn my thumbnails in only a few episodes, from this, which looks alright, to this, ooh, and this, and this. What I'm talking about here is the extra detail I've managed to add to my Minecraft character who I've posed for the thumbnail here. Specifically this lovely outline shading coming in from one side, and the much more detailed expression that breaks the boundaries of what Minecraft's usually capable of in a skin's normal resolution. And now you may be wondering, Jam, how do you do that? And how can I do that too for my own thumbnails? And to that I say, good thing this is a tutorial! Today's tutorial resolves around a program known as Blockbench, which you've probably heard of. It's a really fantastic free pixel art software that's very commonly used for stuff pertaining to Minecraft, like resource pack assets and skins and stuff. There will be a link to install this in the description if you don't already have it installed. Once you have Blockbench installed and open, we're going to want to navigate to this sidebar here and select Minecraft skin then create new model. We've got some standard skin options here, like whether we want it wide or slim. I'm slim, so I'm gonna go with slim. And then by clicking this bar here, we can select the skin file we want to work with. Instantly, you will notice it may look a bit incorrect if you utilize the second layer a lot, and that's because it is turned off, as we can see here. So we're going to want to navigate to this sidebar and press all the buttons that are eyes with lines through them. And there we go, we've unhidden the second layer. And this is where the magic's going to begin. By right-clicking our texture here on the left of the screen, there's a load of options. The one we're going to be focusing on is Resize Texture, so click on that, and then press Scale, and then we're going to resize this to 256 by 256, then confirm. Instantly, but it doesn't look any different, there's no noticeable changes. But when we start drawing on this, you will notice the canvas is now a lot bigger. By resizing the texture, there's so much more detail we can now work with. The possibilities are endless. Wow. However, our first order of business is posing. Good thing there's a button up here saying pose on it. Click that. <laughs> then you'll see it takes us to this separate interface where we can click on things and spin them around and rotate them and have a lot of fun posing our character. There are some preset poses up here you can use as bases or if you just want Blockbench to do it for you, which is completely fine, there's some fun things here. Also worth noting that if you click on a part and then press V on your keyboard, you can now move it around if you want a bit more flexibility in how you compose your character. For this thumbnail, I'm going to have my character look a bit shocked. He, he's seen something. What has he seen? I don't know, up to you. But yeah, here's a pose I'm happy with and I'm going to stick with this. Though, of course, whatever pose you use is really up to you and it's really dependent on what, you, what you're envisioning here. Now, before we get on to the fun, there's a couple of settings you're going to want to make up your mind on whether or not you utilise. Again, this is all up to you, but the first thing we're going to take a look at is this funky button here that appears when we press this preview button, which says orthographic. Now, when we click it, our character's going to look a bit different. He's a lot flatter, there's a lot less depth. And then we can click it again, and he pops out a lot more with a lot more depth. We can think about this the same way we think of Field of View or FOV in Minecraft. Without orthographic enabled, it's like a much wider FOV, easier to play with, you can see more. But with orthographic enabled, it's similar to a much lower FOV. It's more enclosed, it's more compact, and there's a lot less depth. As I've said, this is entirely up to you, but I like to base it on the mood of my thumbnail. If I really want my character to pop out, if there's a bit more action, I'm going to not enable orthographic, so we've got that nice depth. But if it's a bit more relaxed than that, I'll probably enable it to help everything feel a bit more compact. And then very quickly, we're going to go over this shading button. You see, pressing that toggle shading on and off. This is also entirely a preference, but I do find that the tip I'm about to show off works a lot better without shading on. So this mode here, where the shading is all flat as opposed to this. Right, so what we're gonna start with is fun facial expressions. For this, I'm going to turn off the hat layer of my head, and I'm also going to hide the arms just so I can see the face better. So my character looks a bit shocked, so I'm going to make him look shocked. That, that's how uh, emotion works. I'm going to make his eyes a lot bigger, because he's seen some stuff, all right? <laughs> 
We can also then turn the second layer back on and have a lot of fun utilising that. Like, I can put my pupils on the second layer and suddenly they pop out a lot more. We can even play around with some highlights in the eyes. We can make the eyebrows pop a bit more. There's so much fun stuff you can do when it comes to expressions just by making your Minecraft skin larger. <laughs> Maybe even some little exclamation marks up here. Fully leaning into the cartoon logic here because that is a lot of fun. At this point, I'm happy with the facial expression I've done here. Hopefully you're happy with whatever you've done. And now now, onto the shading. For this, we're going to want to start by turning off all the second layers, which may look a bit weird, but makes this process easier for now. There we go, we've we flattened our guy. You're going to want to select white for your paintbrush, and you see this opacity slider, drag this down to about 79, I'd say is a good one, and then self-explanatory, our opacity is lower. Now, the white lines we're going to draw will need to be on one side of each part, so it's important to know where you're going to want the light to be coming from. If you're doing this for a thumbnail, I recommend and thinking about your thumbnail as a whole. If your character is going to be on the right side, for example, it's probably better to have the light coming from the other side. And then of course your highlight lines will be on the side that interacts most with the light. So in my case, I'm going to go with this side and start drawing these subtle lines on every edge of the left side of each part. Okay, there we go, that's looking quite nice. If you want to go a step further, you can either lower it again and do horizontal lines on the top of parts, but that's only if you want to. And now it's a matter of turning on all our second layers again, and doing the exact same thing for those. And there you have it, here's an example of what you can do by resizing your Minecraft skin texture, Whoa! There's so much more you can play around with, like coloured light, and different lighting from both sides. But for now, if you're happy with what you've done, you can press the preview button here, then screenshot model, and clipboard or save, and then you can paste it into whatever you're using to make your thumbnails. I'm using a program called Zara, but pretty much any program where you can paste in a picture and move it will work for this. I've got an example thumbnail here with a random Minecraft screenshot as a background. Then we can just start fiddling, resizing, moving, all that stuff, find a good place to pop our character. And of course, it's up to you to slap whatever you want to onto the thumbnail. It's your thumbnail! I'm just the tutorial guy. And there we have it. That was how to improve your Minecraft thumbnail character poses in however many minutes this was. I do hope that this was helpful and that you learned something new maybe. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will try my best to answer. Also feel free to join my Discord because I'd love to see anything you've created using this tutorial if you're willing to share. And have a good day. Toodle pip!